Finito was designed by Hartmut Comerl and was published by Schmidt in 2008 in their Easy Play line. It's for two to four players, ages eight and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play. In my experience, it can be as little as 10 minutes. To set up, each player gets a board with 36 spaces, numbered 1 to 20. Most values appear twice. Each player also gets a set of 12 tokens of the same color, numbered 1 to 12. Players should flip all their tokens face down, and then mix them up, then turn over a random three tokens face up. Give one player the 20-sided die, doesn't matter who, all players take their turns at the same time. The goal of Finito is to get your tokens on your board. Each token will go in one of the 36 spaces on the board, and to get them in ascending order. By that I mean if you were to look at your board and go from 1 to 20, so left to right on the first row, then left to right on the second row, and so on, the first token you see will be your 1, then your 2, then your 3, and so on. If you can get all 12 of your tokens on your board from lowest to highest, yell finito. You win. To start, any player rolls the die and calls out the result, which will be between 1 and 20. Here I rolled a 19. All players must then pick one of their three face-up tokens to place in a space matching that value. So, for example, a 19 is rolled, so each player picks one of their face-up tokens to place on the 19 space. Then, all players flip another random face-down token of theirs, so they have three face-up again. Players then repeat the process, rolling the die again, calling out the number, and picking another face-up token to put in the matching space. Now, if all the spaces of the matching value are already occupied, you can place it in the next available space, either before or after. If you have no face down tokens remaining to flip over, just skip that step and play with what you have. So after 12 turns, all your tokens are going to be on your board. And probably in a very mixed up order. After that, Turns continue very similarly, and players will spend their turns trying to rearrange their tiles. So, just like before, one player rolls the die, calls out the number, and places, and everybody's going to place some token on the matching space, or the nearest before or after, if they're all occupied. But, instead of placing a new token, you're going to pick up any one of your tokens that's already on your board, and move it to the new space. You can pick any token to move to the new space, which can result in some funny moves. So let's say the 13 is rolled again, and there's two 13 spaces, and now they're both occupied. So the next available spaces are the 12 before and the 14 after. You can move any token to either the 12 or the 14, including a token that was already on the 13 space. Now that might seem a little counterintuitive, but that's just a funny example of what you're allowed to do. So if, at the end of your turn, one or more players have all their tokens in order, so counting the spaces from 1 to 20, the tokens are in order from 1 to 12, call out finito. The first player or players to call out finito wins. You're ready to play finito. Level X was designed by Stefan Risthaus and was published in 2010 by Schmidt in their Easy Play line. It's for two to four players, ages eight and up, and takes about 20 minutes to play. To set up the game, stack up all the point chips into six piles, one for each value, and place them in their matching spots on the board. If playing with fewer than four players, remove one point chip of each value and put it back in the box. Also, stack up all the bonus tiles in order, so the lowest, the 6, is on the bottom, and the highest, the 15, is on top. Each player gets all six pawns of a single color. If playing with kids, have the youngest player go first. 
Otherwise, players can roll the dice to determine a start player, or do whatever you want. Players take turns in clockwise order. Now, the goal of the game is to get these, these point chips. Each chip is worth its face value in points. And in addition, whenever you get a complete set of all six, you get a bonus tile, which is worth extra points. The game end is triggered when all the bonus tiles are claimed, or all the point chips of three values are gone. Players finish the round, so all players get the same number of turns. Then players total up their point chips and their bonus tiles, and the player with the highest total wins. Now, in order to get a point chip, you need to get one of your pawns onto the X space of the matching row. Now, all pawns start off the board. You have one pawn for each of the six rows, and you'll be marching your pawns down the track toward the X. When your pawn enters the X, you immediately get a matching point chip. You can even get multiple while your pawn is there. The catch is that while any number of players can share most of the spaces on the board, each X can only have at most one player on it. Whenever a player moves their pawn onto an X, any pawn already there gets kicked out. That pawn goes off the board, though you can bring it back on later. Now on your turn, roll all four dice. And if the result has multiple ones, something special happens, and I'll explain that later. But otherwise, you combine your four dice into groups in any way you like. So you can have four groups of one die each, or one group of all four dice, or anything in between. For each group of dice you make, you add up the pips, and you get to move your pawn on the matching row. For example, with this roll, you can make 5 and 10, or 9 and 6, or 3 fives. These are just some of the possibilities. So for example, let's say I decided to pick uh, 10 and 5. Now for each group you make, total up the pips and move a pawn on the matching row. In this case, I'd move a pawn one space on the 5 and one space on the 10. If the pawn for that row isn't already on the board, it first step, its first step is on the leftmost space. If it's already on the board, it moves one space to the right, or more. For example, if I'd chosen three fives, I'd move the pawn on the five row three spaces. As I said before, your pawn can share any normal numbered space with any number of other players, but the X space can only be occupied by one player at a time. As soon as your pawn lands on an X space, any pawn already there is kicked out. They go back to start, which is off the board, and they can be brought back in later. And when your pawn enters an X, you immediately win a point chip in the matching row. And as long as your pawn sits on the X space, any time you'd move forward in that row again, you'd win another chip. If no one kicks you out, you can score a lot of points by staying on an X and rolling those numbers again and again. But there's a reason you may want to roll other numbers, to get other values of point chips. Whenever a player gets a complete set of all six different point chips, they take the topmost bonus tile, which is worth as many points as is shown on the tile. The highest valued ones are on top, so you may want to work on getting those sets early. Note that one player can get multiple bonus tiles if they get more than one set. By the way, you can split up your dice any way you like. You can split them up so some of the pip totals aren't even on the board. So I could split these up so there's a 4 and a 1, but these numbers aren't on the board. That's fine. That just means those particular dice don't do anything. In this case, I just used the two 5s. Of course, it would be better in this case to combine the 4 and the 1, so I have three 5s instead. Oh, one final rule. If you roll more than one one on the dice, now that would normally be pretty bad, since it's hard to combine them into values you can use. So if that happens, you get to do a special thing. Set aside any other values you rolled, and one of the ones you rolled. You can change, so I'm setting these aside here, you can change the remaining dice into whatever values you want. And that's it. When all the bonus tiles are gone, 
or any three point chip piles are empty, finish the round. That is, keep playing until the player to the right of the start player has finished their turn. That way, every player has the same number of turns. Then each player totals up the values of all their point chips and bonus tiles. The player with the highest sum wins. You're ready to play Level X. Finito and Level X are two of the better games, possibly the best games, in my opinion, uh, in the Schmidt Easy Play line, which is a line of games I happen to be a fan of anyway. All the games in that line are really simple to play, simple to learn. They're in a really approachable package. Um, these games wouldn't scare off people, you know, people who aren't gamers and go, oh, that looks too complicated for me. Nope. These are really easy to play, really easy to learn, and they're just a really fun time. Uh, Finito is one of my favorite fillers. As I said, the games can take as little as 10 minutes. And you could totally picture a family, maybe three generations, all playing this game at the same time and just making a night of it, just playing it again and again, having conversation while they're playing. Uh, it definitely has that one more game quality uh, and is a personal favorite of mine. I happen to like Level X quite a bit as well. It often gets compared to Can't Stop. Uh, Can't Stop is a classic game. I have that as well. Really f a fan of that one as well. Now, Can't Stop is a push-your-luck game. On the face of it, they look very similar because there's multiple tracks and you're moving pawns on the tracks. And on your turn, you're rolling dice and combining them to make sums which determine which tracks you're going to move forward on that turn. But in Level X, after that, your turn's over. You just roll the dice one time. In Can't Stop, you can roll again and again and again pushing your luck, trying to go further and further, uh, with there being a risk to pushing too far. That can make the turns in Can't Stop really, really long, uh, especially if somebody has a, a good combination and just keep rolling it and rolling it and pushing your luck. I actually don't enjoy playing Can't Stop with four players. Level X, though, I will play any number of players, two, three, four. I really like this game. I like both these games. I like a lot of the games in the series. Now, the first game in this series is a game called Big Points, and that was re released recently, a couple of years ago, I guess, by a company called BoardGameTables.com, which re-released it as Bytes in a beautiful presentation uh, and with a theme. Whereas, like these games, Big Points had no theme. Now they have a theme of ants crawling along a trail, and it's just a, a charming presentation. Um, so I was very happy to hear that BoardGameTables.com is releasing new versions of Finito and Level X. Um, I was an Instabacker on Kickstarter as soon as I heard that. So because I have these games and because they announced this, I thought um, I'd just put this video out there, let people know my thoughts. I happen to be a really big fan of both of these games. And so I'm really looking forward to seeing what BoardGameTables.com is doing with these uh, new reprints. And I encourage you to check them out. Thanks for watching.